हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम प्रोफेसर राजेंद्र कोरांदे फ्रॉम माय यूट्यूब चैनल टीच इजी नाउ इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू प्रेजेंट सम एडिशनल एमसीक्यूज ऑन द टॉपिक ऑफ डायरेक्ट एंड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेसेस ऑफ थियरी ऑफ स्ट्रक्चर इन द फर्स्ट वीडियो ऑफ एमसीक्यू फॉर टॉस आई हैव गिवन यू सम थर्टीन एम ऑफ डायरेक्ट एंड बेंडिंग स्ट्रेसेस नाउ इन दिस वन i will add some more so without wasting the time let us start question number 14 in a tall chimney the direct stresses are induced due to a lateral wind pressure b self weight of chimney c horizontal wind force and d any of the above now you know that a tall chimney is a structure in the industry which is provided to release the gases at high altitude so it is a tall structure which is having a higher weight and the direct stresses are induced due to their self weights hence the correct answer of this is b self weight of chimney question number 15 in a tall chimney the direct stresses are induced are proportional to a height of the chimney b cross sectional area of the chimney c unit weight of material of the chimney and d both a and c above now here you must be able to find out the parameters on which direct stress depends the direct stress depend on height of the chimney definitely it also depends upon the unit weight of material of the chimney because direct stress is equal to rho into h hence the correct answer of this question is d both a and c above question number 16 in a tall chimney the bending stress is induced due to a lateral wind pressure b self weight of the chimney c unit weight of material of the chimney and d none of the above now you know that as chimney is a tall structure it is subjected to wind pressure in lateral direction and due to this lateral wind pressure the bending stresses are induced hence the correct answer of this question is a lateral wind pressure question number 17 the total wind force acting on the wall of the chimney due to lateral wind pressure depends on a intensity of wind pressure b height of the chimney c nature of wall surface d all the above now we know that the force due to wind pressure is calculated which depends upon what is the intensity of wind pressure what is the height of the chimney nature of the wall means whether that surface is plane or curved so it depends upon all hence the correct answer of this question is d all the above question number 18 a column carries a load placed at a limiting eccentricity if the direct stress induced is 6 mpa then the maximum and minimum resultant stresses induced at the base in mpa will be a 12 0 b 0 12 c 6 and 6 and d 0 6 so first digit is uh, sigma maximum and second digit is sigma minimum now what is given in this particular problem column carries a load which is placed at limiting eccentricity means at critical eccentricity so when the load is placed at critical eccentricity that critical eccentricity is calculated by the condition sigma 0 is equal to sigma b means when the load is at critical eccentricity sigma 0 and sigma b are equal hence the maximum stress sigma 0 plus sigma b that is 2 times sigma 0 and minimum stress is 0 so 2 times 6 is 
and minimum is 0. Hence, the correct answer of this question is A, 12 and 0. Question number 19. A 600 mm thick masonry wall is 5 meter high. If the unit weight of masonry is 20 kN per meter cube, the direct stress induced at the base of the wall per unit length will be A. 12 kPa B. 30 kPa C. 100 kPa and D. None of the above kPa means kN per meter square Now here we know that the direct stress is calculated as rho into h now rho is given here as 20 kN per meter cube it should be so rho is 20 and height is 5 so 20 into 5 that is 100 so the correct answer is c 100 kPa question number 20 a trapezoidal dam retains water on its vertical face the resultant stress induced at the base of the dam will be maximum at A. The heel of the dam B. The toe of the dam C. The centroid of the base section D. None of the above Now in this question you have to understand what is known as heel and what is known as toe Whenever the water is retained on the vertical surface the bottommost point on the cross section is known as heel and on the other side the bottommost point on the cross section is known as toe so maximum stress is always induced at the toe okay so the correct answer of this is b toe of the dam 21 a trapezoidal dam retains water on its vertical face. The resultant stress induced at the base of the dam will be minimum at A. Heel of the dam B. The toe of the dam C. The centroid of the base section D. None of the above So it is exactly the same question. In the previous question, maximum stress was asked here in this minimum stress. The minimum stress will be induced at the heel of the dam Hence, the correct answer is A, heel of the dam. Question number 22. For a dam with bot bottom width B and water face vertical, the resultant force cuts the base at a distance Z from the heel. To avoid the tension at any point in the dam, the value of Z should be A, less than B by 3, B, greater than b by 3 c less than b by 2 d less than 2 b by 3 now here we know that the self weight of the dam acts vertical downward and the total water force acts horizontally their resultant will cut the base section at a point the distance of which is given as z you know that we calculate Z as X plus X bar, okay? And the eccentricity of that resultant is given as E is equal to Z minus B by 2. Now, from middle third rule, we know that for no tension anywhere in the dam, the eccentricity should be within the middle third means eccentricity should be less than b by 6 so if you put b by 6 e as b by 6 then you will get the equation b by 6 is equal to z minus b by 2 and ultimately you will get z is equal to 4 b by 6 that is 2 b by 3 hence the correct answer of this question is d less than 2 b by 3 this is important question please see it carefully question number 23 for a dam to prevent overturning the restoring movement must be dash 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 the overturning movement a less than b greater than c equal to and d none of the above now we know that overturning takes place due to the total water pressure or water force 
it takes place at the toe okay now if overturning is to be avoided the restoring movement is due to the self weight of the dam okay that is it is by w into b minus x bar okay now this restoring movement must be greater than the overturning movement and it will not overturn the dam so the correct answer of this question is b greater than question number 24 to prevent sliding of the dam the frictional force between the base of the dam and surface below must be dash 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 the total water thrust p a less than b equal to c greater than and d none of the above here the frictional force will be developed at the common surface between the base of the dam and the uh, surface on which the dam is resting and this will be frictional force and the sliding will take place due to total water thrust so if this frictional force is greater than total water thrust definitely there will not be the sliding of the dam hence the correct answer of this question is c greater than question number 25 to avoid the failure of the dam due to crushing of masonry the maximum stress must be dash 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 the permissible stress in the masonry a less than b greater than c equal to and d none of the above now the dam can fail due to crushing if the maximum stress induced is greater than the permissible stress in the material of the dam okay therefore to avoid the failure this maximum stress must be less than the permissible stress in the masonry of the dam hence the correct answer of this question is a less than thank you